Cybernetics was born after World War II to study feedback, the key to systemic control. Feedback literally means returning information to the origin to correct a system's behavior. However, complex systems can surprise us because feedback can sometimes produce results which are totally counterintuitive. We want the system to do something, and it does exactly the opposite. Therefore, systems can be tricky and can generate traps. Sir Geoffrey Vickers, one of the first system scientists, had these words of caution. The nature of the trap depends on the nature of the trap, he said. Donella Meadows and Peter Senji will be our guides to describe 10 different system archetypes. In a highly complex and interdependent world, it is hard to find a behavior that is not the product of a very complex system. Take the National Football League, for instance. You have owners, teams, players, TV stations, and the public as part of a gigantic system. Physical structures are usually long-term investments, so changes to these systems can be costly and slow. There are two kinds of information feedback, positive and negative. Positive feedback is present when more of one thing produces more of another. Negative feedback is used to control a system. These two models can combine to create a more detailed model. A self-reinforcing loop has two positive feedback signals connected in a circular fashion. One negative feedback loop might be enough to balance a system. This example is read as follows. The greater the population, the greater the number of babies born. When the number of babies increases, the population also increases, and so on. Control loop, self-balancing loop, or negative feedback loop all mean the same thing. Our first example is called limits to growth. When resources are involved, systems cannot grow forever. Spontaneous competition is an obstacle to unlimited growth. A profitable industry does not go undetected for long. Fixes that fail result because individual agents and systems do not have the same goals. Agents will learn to offset the measures and a new policy fails. For instance, you assume that shrinking profits are the result of staff size, so you make cuts. However, a hidden variable is at work. Staff cuts bring down productivity, which affects profits even more. So the counterintuitive result might be that the more you cut, the lower the profits. All cybernetic models are initially hypothetical. They bear the burden of proof. Models have to be tested before they can be considered valid. Nevertheless, they are helpful in building what-if scenarios or diagnosing troublesome systems. This is the arms race or escalation model. The arsenals and perceived threats are symmetrical. Escalation has no control loops. The system is fed forward and won't stop until an agreement is reached or one of the agents goes broke, as happened to the Soviet Union. The tragedy of the commons is a bit more complicated. It is full of positive, self-reinforcing, and apparently wonderful feedback loops, as you see here. More and more cattle are taken to pasture on the common grounds. The trap is set because the common resource is depletable. If the rate of exploitation exceeds the natural resiliency of the system to restore itself, the whole system will crash. Delays explain the surprise. When the law is not applied, then the law itself becomes the victim of the tragedy of the commons archetype, a sure incentive for widespread corruption. Eroding goals are also called a drift to low performance or the boiled frog syndrome. Usually the incoming feedback signal is misinterpreted to be a worse result than expected. Instead of correcting the action to offset the error message, the goal is modified and set to a lower level. But the same problem occurs next time around. Hence, 
the goal is gradually downgraded because it feels very remote. Eventually, the system is abandoned. A and B have a good thing going. They feed on each other's success. But then, notice the two blue loops, in an effort to do better individually, they take measures that tarnish the profitability of the other. This is called the accidental or unintended adversaries system. The rich get richer is a fed forward system. Richer people belong to more self-reinforcing networks than the poor. Small mobile phone companies try to break away through better fees, but large telephone companies retaliate with dozens of different plans to confuse the consumer. The NFL broke the rich get richer and created balance using draft rules. This is an important American exception to free market for the greater good of all parties involved. Corruption and cheating are other names for the rule beating system archetype. Wherever there is a rule, there is likely to be rule beating, says Donella Meadows. People traveling at 90 miles an hour benefit from those obediently driving at the 55 mile per hour limit. Many systems are cheated by complying with the letter of the law, but not with the spirit. In the addiction trap, also called shifting the burden, the agent falls for the quick fix to resolve the problem, but fixes only the symptoms and brings about pernicious side effects that close the altered perception loop. A bogus system goal is a perversion. There are many examples. Wars have bogus goals. National economies have dozens of bogus goals too. The bigger and costlier the institution, the bigger the bogus goals it has. The purpose is defined by the structure and includes the stated goals and resources set aside to pursue them. Beware what you wish for. Remember, Stafford Beer said, the purpose of a complex system is what the system does. I hope these examples have helped you visualize systemic problems.